Welcome to another teardown video. For this one, I am a little bit puzzled about. I think this unit is something you buy. I think it is called a DISA type 55K01. So this is the main unit whatever that is doing. And then there is another plug-in module, a type 55K10 CTA standard bridge. So this is a bridge with linear or non-linear amplification output uh, something. And since this is a flow meter, what kind of probe do you need to connect to it? cable compensation and a cable length and then there's a meter look at that weirdo weirdo what is that and then you can run off a ac or battery and on off and then there's a cable here i have also been looking a little bit into this weird weird connector it says it says a lot of stuff here on the side i'm not able to read 30 24 volts 12 volts common coax connector something so this is also in use and then there is a DC DC connect converter down here that was used to be glued somehow and if you, if I take this and rotate it we can see it is a DC DC converter I don't know exactly what this is doing I think we can see this from the model number maybe and then oh, or maybe it's mounted like this I don't know and also it is quite heavy maybe maybe this was uh, for a battery of some sort and there's an external DC input and this big cased fantastic module is mounted via these three screws and they were all loose when I got it. It says 24 volts. And, uh, and then there's a, yeah, this hole. There isn't really a lot to say about this. I have no idea what it is doing. So I think I will try and power it up and input something and let's see what is going on. So this is the first test, I give it 24 volts and it uses half an amp so it's about 12 volt, uh, watts and I got a little bit of readout and see it is affected so oh yeah okay so this is times 10 sort of and it says not ready so maybe this has is this a warm up or is it just because the readout is not within range or what can I do to fix this? I don't understand what this external bridge arm what is that? And probe that must be the input, right? And this those are outputs. I can I can only reach this one to this meter, right? So this it has to be like that I guess so what I did is I take a little resistor here and plug this into the probe and touching this doesn't really affect anything so what I did is see it goes down but if I short it goes up so that is that is really funny a little bit I think what is this 150 ohms or something right and then it goes down and then if I short it goes up what 
Okay, now I'll try and input something else. <laughs> it is getting really, really weird. What the heck is this doing? So this is the input and this is the output. Oh my god. And then I'm inputting a little bit of of AC. Minus 170 millivolts and a little bit of AC. Let's just see here. So this is the input. And then it goes absolutely bonkers. So this will be my input signal, I guess. So it is really affecting how it is. See? It's doing all sorts of really fantastic things. I don't know what exactly this thing is doing and how it works, but there is definitely some weirdo amplification things going on in here. I still am not able to Google anything. So there's no way that I can look up exactly what this thing is doing, what kind of sensors and stuff. So I think we just skip measuring more because I'm only going to get super confused about this. Let's see what is inside this thing, right? Let's tear it down. So the first thing that I found is that clicking those two will release this login module and it says something about calibration offset and exponential something so okay so maybe this is some analog thing I don't know let's look in here it's full of with some light all sorts of balls full of components and whatnot. So I think we need to pull out this unit as well uh, because this is, this is really, really deep compared to this module and full of good stuff. I really would like to know what is inside this thing. Okay, so that was easy. Just unscrewing these three and this whole thing slides into this. So this is only power, I guess. Then we can pull out this entire unit. Ooh, it says some more stuff here. Some remote and some... So this is a serial number and the DC Halo. So it looks like we can definitely pull this thing apart. It looks like those screws and then we can take out the entire shield. Yep. That is a good idea. So yes, it was just to unscrew here and slide out the entire casing. Look at this beautiful piece of engineering. Wow! It all looks like analog stuff full of transistors and op amps and fantastic things. Look at the plastic holders for the op amps. I guess that's op amps, right? And it looks like it's really old. It could be 70s, 80s, something. BDY55. some voltage regulators or something look there's a switch so it knows if the plug-in module is missing and everything here is in socket so we can pull those boards out oh they're coded differently so you can't assemble this wrong that is really really good and what is inside this module i can't wait to look in that one 
Oh, you gotta see this. Really, really nice mechanical solution. And this is the bottom PCB. See, when you see stuff like this, you know they they are big thinkers because that is ground loops removal and all good things. So this is definitely some DC or low frequency and super linear stuff. I like the silk screen on the bottom as well. That is real beautiful. Okay, let's take up the PCBs first and then we're gonna open that one. So let's look a little bit more on the three PCBs. They are really, really beautiful. And you can see that is a dual transistor. Another dual transistor pair and an IC and all that. This is really nice for maintenance or debugging. Let's look at the other side. Oops, sorry about that. So what is that? High power transistors. And this will be an op amp. And the, yeah, the dual transistors. And all the red ones here, 0.5%. Also, that's also 0.5%. So they mean, mean business. All those resistors, they're really good quality. So and that was the first PCB. Let's take the next. And it is looking a little bit like the same. Again, some op aim. This, this will be an op aim, right? A lot of different transistors. The PCB layout is really beautiful. Look at all those tracks, how they go around like that, and numbers on the sockets, and yeah really really well designed and here's the last one i think this one looks a little bit funny you can see those two circuits they are only connected via one resistor isn't that funny I don't know exactly what that op amp is. Ooh, is that 73? Is this from 73? Uh -huh, so that is pretty cool. So this is really old. So that will be the three beautiful PCBs. And this is the internal connectors. If this is really 73, I think they have been quite a lot ahead of their time. And here is this. Can we? Yes, I could. This is the secret box of good things we need to open that definitely the internal parts of this fancy box and now what do we see something that is thermally isolated 
You know what that is? Is there a way to get in here? No. Oh. I can't lift this up. I think there's something in here that needs to warm up to be good and stable. And this can also explain the not ready. There is a warm up time. So clearly that is what is going to happen here. We need for this to turn off, right? I definitely want to see in here. So this is ultra thin flexible PCBs that is bent and soldered like that. Ooh, now I get curious what is inside this one. And also this needs to be some sort of a trim. Look at that. High precision resistors and trim of this and that. What are they thinking about? We need to see what is in here. There's just no way that I can take this off without breaking it and I want to know what is inside this thing. So I'm trying to dig my way and I think this is like this PU foam they put inside a case and then remove the case. I think this is a really really nice way to make a good thermal isolation design. But what is in here? Let's try and see. Hmm. I need to dig a little bit more. Oh, this is really how you do it. So this ultra thin flexible PCB is a really good way to make electrical contacts but without transferring heat so this thing is just completely glued into this but i could of course break it apart so now what is in here this is also another layer of thermal and wires goes all the way up there and around it is it folded oh, this is looking really interesting i love it when i find something really odd and interesting inside my teardowns getting a little bit more in so this thin flexible pcb those two layers they are folded and they go in here in the top and on the other side i see some like two solderings that so there's maybe a heater and a temperature sensor and this is obviously some temperature sensing measuring power regulation stuff and this piece is also some foamy but foamy plastic casting of some sort but it is a lot more tough compared to this PU foam that is of really really low density so this is a little bit higher and then I think maybe I can yeah maybe I can open from the top but we need to figure out what is inside this one that is the that is the mission I just keep finding more and more this is the gift that keeps giving <laughs> look at that those are wires i think this is the heater so the heater goes around something so those are just the wires that goes around and around and then they come through here right so this is how this thing is assembled some heaters oh, so that i just really need to break it to see what is inside and i kind of didn't want that I wanted to be able to assemble it again and see how it performs and what it does so is this an amplifier or is this the a voltage reference of some exotic type so that was quite easy 
to remove this unit and here on one side it looks a little bit different see all those signals they're trying to isolate them really really weird on some of them and we got some see that must be the heater right so i should be able to pull yes okay i think we are in what is inside this thingy I, we need to figure this out so now the heater is removed and it was just wrapped around this we got some ICs two different types This is a really, really beautiful design. Let me unscrew this and see if I can get in. So here is the unfolded PCB. And what is this? SFC 2741s, okay, dual up amps. And what is that here? 2N... 2453 okay dual transistor pairs and what is that lm301 just two op amps boring I was hoping for some really sexy voltage references and stuff. This is just, okay, really, really, really nice temperature compensation of analog um, amplifiers or, you know, op amps and stuff. Really, really critical things for doing um, analog, high precision analog. But that is all this is doing. And it must have costed a fortune to manufacture. Look at all those details. It's really, really done well. And I think that I can reuse some of this mechanical parts, some of this uh, for my LM399 voltage reference uh, project. Maybe this is a, a good mechanical fixture for that. So I think I'll say yeah, save a little bit. All this is rubbish now because I totally blown it up. I will maybe see if I can find some some really really. I was looking for some zero point one percent resistors, but this is not what I find. It is zero point five, and it's not really those super low TC parts uh, when we see today's standards. Also, I've been looking a little bit on time codes or, you know, year codes, and I see this 72 on a lot of stuff. So I think this is from the 70s. You see it here? 73 again. So all parts are really that old. And also, let's see on the... Maybe we can find... Oh, yeah. I don't know, but it is really that old. All right, so let's have a look inside this fantastic plug-in module. Let me open it. So now I am inside this fantastic plug-in module, and I see four PCBs. I wonder what that one is interesting so there's a funny ah come on what is that doing here on the side it 
a what? That looks like a heater, right? So if that is a heater, there must be a temperature sensor as well. Why would you do this? That is interesting. I don't know how to get this one out because this is in one piece. So, hmm. But so far we can... We, Ooh, some more funky stuff. They're just playing with magic here, aren't they? It's just all over the place. So here's another op amp. And some... Oui. What is that thingy? <laughs> I definitely going to... What? Hey, what is that thing? A little glass tube with some four windings and heating, measuring. Funny, funny stuff. What exactly is this? And if I touch this, I'll probably die. I don't know. That one. I need to save for later inspection. If you know exactly what that is, you are hereby forced to comment. We need to know that. Two red, two green, and some other wires that's... Oh, those wires, they just go around this little bottom part down here. What? No, okay, this is just holding. They're just holding those two thin wires. They're connected to the... Maybe this is a heater or some stuff. Well, that was definitely a find. Another funky find. And what is that component? What? There's no... What the devil is this? Okay, this... I don't know what that is. I will get in. I promise you. So stay tuned. Aha! More heating. Don't you just love this? What is that? <laughs> 50.5 ohm, 1%. Yeah, like that is important. Are you crazy? <laughs> why? Why? Tell me why. Now it is getting more and more interesting. Okay, let's start with the funky component here. That was just a switch. Boring. But this part is an inductor, but the black wire that was around it was some sort of a secondary that was shorted. So it's... why is that? Yeah, that's weird. And this is also connected to the magic, magic PCB here that is doing all sorts of funkiness so an op amp is connected you can maybe even see more or less the schematic here if we turn it around you can pause the video and you can reverse engineer this if you want to and tell us what is the magic behind the madness? All right, so yeah, I didn't really find any other fantastic things in this. But, oh yeah, this module. So this is really a module where you 
change the cable length and then there can't be anything in this one right and the connector so this is interchangeable okay so what is inside this so now we're inside this little module this is the cable length module and it only consists of timing components so of course with a, a like a cable length uh, sensor delay this is the delay line right so there's a variable inductor and a resistor and all sorts of uh, yeah timing components so this is definitely delaying and again those really nice precision resistors yep everything here is really really top top quality i must say